Hey guys, it's MJ the student actuary and I got a comment on one of the pension videos I did for subject CT5 um, by Rupal, I hope I'm saying your name correctly and he's just asked me to explain the commutation functions um, a little bit better and I saw in my video I go through it very quickly to try to get the entire chapter done um, but you can see I started explaining it to him and I thought it's going to be actually much easier if I explain this in a video and then if you guys are also having a little bit of issues with commutation functions um, you can also get some benefit from this. Now just a heads up I did find this incredibly difficult um, so I'm hoping my explanation is going to be beneficial. So without further ado um, let me get my my old notes up. Uh, yeah, here we go chapter 11 pension funds and I thought let's just talk about the very simplest thing. So we're just going to look at this very quickly, um, explain what this formula is, and then I am going to extend it a little bit to this one here. I'm not going to be talking um, about the salary scale. And I mean, you can see, sorry, I'm scrolling very quickly. Um, let me see. You can see it starts getting quite complicated when you bring in R, and there's even, where's this thing, N at the you, you can see commutation functions do get a little bit tricky. Um, but I thought, because we don't have too much time, let's just focus on here. Let's just focus on what this exactly is. Um, let's talk through it. Let's discuss it. And then hopefully I give you guys enough of a foundation for you to tackle the later commutation functions on your own. Because uh, yeah, this is actuarial science where we are smart enough to figure things out on our own, but we do need a little bit of help um, in the beginning. So let's look at this, okay. A little bit of background on why we even made this formula is we want to calculate how much a person's retirement is worth now. So if a person is going to retire at age 65, and let's say that person is going to get a thousand rand or dollars or rupees or whatever your currency is. A thousand, when he retires at age 65 and he's aged 50 now, how much is this retirement package worth? And why that's important, it because it lets us know how much this person should save now in order to have that benefit later. Or if you're a company, how much extra remunerations you need to pay your employee when they retire. And retirement's a good thing. It's, um, it's when you stop working because of old age and you receive a little bit of money um, to continue living and just relax after a very hard working life. Okay, so now we've got the philosophy um, and the understanding of why we're even doing this behind the way. Let's dig into it. And let's just reach here. It's a commutation function. That's what we're looking at. It's an expected present value. And this, is, this statement here gives us a lot of information. What this tells us is that while we're actually working this whole thing out is because it's an unknown. It's a random variable. Okay, Because it's a, it's a random variable because if I'm age 50, I'm not guaranteed to retire at age 65. I could retire at age 64, I could retire at age 66, okay? And I may die before I even reach age 65. So there is the probability that this does not happen. And therefore, what we're working out here is an expected present value. So these values over here are gonna contain randomness in them. And that's what we're gonna work out. And how we deal with randomness is we look at the expected present value or the value that this randomness would give us over a very long time. Um, the lump sum benefit is 1,000. I've got that there. That can be any value. Um, I'm just using 1,000 for simplicity. Okay, it's payable on the age retirement at age 65 only. So. This is, this is a very important statement. If I retire at age 64, I'm not going to get a thousand rand. If I retire at age 66, I'm not going to get a thousand rand. I'm only going to get a thousand rand in this situation if I retire at age 65. So you can see that already this is a very simple.
simplistic retirement package, as in reality, I don't think your boss will penalize you for retiring one year later. Um, and this is where M comes in as a commutation function and why these things got getting a little bit more difficult. But this is the very basics of it. So we payable on age retirement at age 65 only. And currently our life is aged 50. And this is again why you can see why you need actuaries in a business because if you have a whole bunch of employees all at different ages, you're going to have to calculate this for each individual person. However, we do have computers and they do most of these calculations for us, but we do have to set up these calculations for them. And that's why robots won't replace actuaries um, anytime soon. They'll replace accountants way before they replace us. Anyway, jokes aside, um, let's get into this. So what is this thing? 1000 times C65R divided by D50. And if you read my comment um, to Rupal, what I was saying is, if we just look here, this 65 represents the age, the 50 here represents the age. And this is just according to my example. They could be any numbers, and in the test, you'll have to put what ages they give you over here. But 65 is a very common age for them to use. It's an age when quite a lot of people do retire. Um, so yeah, we've got the little r over here. This represents that we're dealing with retirement. It could be D to signal death, it could be I to signal illness, and what we're saying is we're focusing only on retirement. So you can see why, again, these things can get complicated. You could get a benefit if you retire, another benefit if you die, and even a different value altogether if you get sick. So let's now look at the second part of this. Okay, so what we're seeing here is this C value um, and even the D value, they comprise of two components, okay? They comprise of this V and of this letter here. So the V and the letter. And the V, think of it as the force of interest and this as the force of retirement. So we're dealing with two forces. And these forces is what introduces randomness. So we've got this 1,000 Rand and two forces are acting on it. The force of interest and the force of retirement okay because we're only going to be paying this amount out if the person retires at this age okay and how do we let's let's focus quickly or should yeah let me no, wait sorry let's do the the v first because that's something you guys should be more comfortable with v65 means we're going to discount this 65 years but we only want to do it from 50 to 65, which is 15 years. And that's why the commutation functions are so powerful. Because we can say V65 and then divide it by this D value, D50, and these Vs cancel so that we have the force of interest to be 15 years, which I've got over here. And that, that just shows how easy it is to use these things, or what's the, the correct word, how, how usable um, they are. So what we're saying here is we're going to take this 1,000 Rand and we're going to discount it by 15 years of interest. Okay, Now that's very basic, that CT1 stuff. So you should be very comfortable with that. The confusing part is that it's combined with this R65 and this L50 thing. Now we did deal earlier in the course with D. Um, so instead of it being a little R, it's a little D. And what that D65 would tell us is the amount of people who have died at age 65. Well, this little R is just telling us how many people have retired at age 65. Now, I've actually got the, the little orange book here. Let me see if I can quickly find exactly how many people do retire at age 65. Um, I know I wrote these values here. But those I just made up, and we'll use those if I can't find um, what I'm looking for. Um, let me just have a quick little check. All these things can be found on, here we go, on page 146. Okay, so in my book, what I have is the retirement at 
yeah, I'm just reading this correctly, at 65 would be 294. Okay, that means at age 65, 294 people um, are retiring, but that's also taking in the, the interest account. So let's not look at this. Sorry, that was a, was a mistake to go look in the orange book because I'm just confusing myself. Let's look here. Um, this is actually why I use these, these values here, just for illustration purposes. So let's say L50 says that at age 50, we have 1 million people in our population. And at age 65, 300,000 of them retire. So R65 is saying the amount of people in our population who have retired. And L50 over here is saying how many people are in our population altogether. So what we do is we take the amount of people that have retired, divided by the amount of people in the population, and this will give us the probability that a person aged 50 now will retire at age 65. And that's very simple CT3 stuff. So you can see, in order to do subject CT5, you need to have a good grounding of subject CT1, CT3, and CT4. Um, so yeah, and then what we do is we take this 1,000 Rand, we times it by this commutation function, which is basically a combination, that's why I um, yeah, it's a combination of the probability of the person retiring and um, the discount of the interest. Or if you want to think of it another way, it's the force of them retiring and it's the force of interest. Finally, what I want to talk about is just this M function here. Because, bam, suddenly I, in my previous video I just introduced M. And let's look here. What this is saying um, this is a lump sum on death, okay? So it's a formula in the commutation functions. It, again, it's an expected present value. It's a probability. It may or may not happen. So we have, um, I've written 10,000 there, but 1,000. It doesn't matter what number. So let's say 1,000 Rand um, that we're going to pay to a person on death. If they die, now this is where it gets interesting, okay? We're going to pay them, if they die, between the ages of 50 and 65. So, if I die when I am 66, or if I die when I'm 65, because it's between the ages, then I'm not gonna get anything. But if I die between ages 50 and 65, I'm gonna get this benefit, okay? So again, we are gonna divide by the force of interest, and we're gonna divide by, um, well, and we're gonna take in the fact that the person might die, the force of mortality. Now, this is where it gets confusing, because we've got M50 here and D50 here. Where are we taking into consideration up to age 65? And how would this have looked different if we said paid on death between age 50 and 65 inclusively? We have not written inclusively, so it's not including 65. But if we had included 65, it would still look exactly the same, because this is where commutation functions get difficult. We define them as we want them. So if we look here, I'm defining MD50, M, to show that it's a sum, D, to show that it's death, 50 is my starting age. And I'm saying it is the sum of the CD50, which is, you know, the force of that the person dies with the interest rate, 50, all the way to 64. I'm defining that from 50 to 64. If it was inclusive, I would have this final value would have been 65. If it was 75, I could change it to 75. I define MD50 how I want to do it. And that's where this stuff gets a little bit crazy, and that's what makes it a little bit difficult, is you are controlling the commutation function. You define it as you want. Okay? And the interesting thing is, look here. Okay? Paid on death paid on death. With our last one, we paid at the age of retirement. So when the person got retired, we paid him his amount. But here the person gets paid on death. When does death happen? We know that retirement happened at age 65. Death can happen any time throughout the year. It can happen in January, it can happen in February, it could happen in December. So what we need to do is we need to make an assumption. 
okay, and we make this assumption, we assume that deaths happen uniformly across the year, or that there's an equal chance of dying in January that there is to dying in December. And so what actuaries do is they basically, when we're looking at a big population, we assume everybody dies in like June, July time, you know, halfway of the year, which is kind of scary because that's the month we currently are in. Um, so what we see here is CXD is equal to VX, according to the age, and I put use the placeholder X because we've got a lot of Cs, instead of having to define each one, plus a half. And this is so that the person can die, we don't know when they're going to die, so we assume that they die halfway in the year, and we can get away with this because some will die in December, some will die in January, but they will even out to be dying in the middle of the year. And then we're using DX, which is the amount of people who have died at age X. So what we're seeing here is, again, the CXD, we are defining, we are creating, we are stating what this computation function is based on the question. If it was paid on end of year of death, then we wouldn't have to include this half value. But because we're paying on death, we don't know when death is, we have to make this assumption that people are dying halfway throughout the year. And so that's why we have CXD is equal to VX plus a half. And finally, D50, it's very similar to what we had before. And yeah, I've actually just written this out a little bit more. Pay, payout could happen on 14 different times, VX plus a half, because the deaths occur on average mid-year. We define the function as we see fit. So yeah, I think I've been talking for a long time, um, but yeah, Rupal, I hope I've answered your question or just introduced computation functions um, in a little bit of a better way. I know in my previous video, I kind of raced through it to just get the chapter done. Um, when I went into the exam, I actually didn't have <laughs> the understanding that I have of it now. It's only coming back, looking at it, am I getting a, a better perspective on what this topic is about? And you are going to find that in actuarial science, some of the things are difficult. They do take time to get your head around. So just be patient with your mind and keep wrestling at it. Um, never give up. And yeah, that is um, computation functions. If you have any questions um, on any of my other videos, if you would like me to explain anything at all, uh, please let me know either in the comment sections below of this video or in whatever video you're watching that you want a specific video to be done. And if I have time and if I understand what's going on, I will make that video for you guys. So yeah, thanks for watching. Um, I'm MJ, the student actuary. Please like and subscribe. Cheers.